Hi everyone, today we're gonna to talk about ICLs or implantable columnar lenses. Hi, my name is Dr. Joshua Cohen. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist here at Cohen Laser and Vision Center in Boca Raton, Florida. Today we're gonna to talk about a relatively new option, the Evo Star ICL. It was FDA approved in 2022 and has been really a transformative option for patients, particularly those with high degrees of nearsightedness. An ICL is only approved right now, and this may change in the future, for nearsighted individuals or those with myopia between minus three diopters and about minus 16 diopters. Uh, so it's really for those moderate to severe degrees of nearsightedness that this lens, I think, is really appropriate and really shines. It can also treat up to four diopters of an astigmatism. So it's a minus 16 spherical equivalent, if you will. So that just means that the average focusing power is limited between those ranges. So it's not approved for astigmatisms greater than four diopters nor for those with farsightedness or hyperopia. And this is different than other refractive surgical options like LASIK or PRK. However, uh, SMILE is also only for myopic patients. So the lens itself actually sits inside the eye. So that's also a unique aspect of this lens. It's more similar to cataract surgery than LASIK because the lens is actually implanted within the eye. It actually sits in this space right here, right behind the iris and in front of the natural lens. It's called the posterior chamber. So in order to get access to this area, an incision needs to be made in the cornea and the lens needs to be slid in and positioned properly. Now, if there's an astigmatism correcting component, then the lens is rotated a few degrees uh, to make sure that that is also treated. These lenses are more or less custom fit and custom ordered for each eye. So it's really important that the doctor spends time to determine you know, the length of the eye, the diameter of the eye, and other features to make sure that the lens is gonna fit properly. One of the biggest risks of this surgery, or at least historically, has been due to its location within the eye, between the iris and the lens. So this is where the fluid or the aqueous humor is made. So the lens could theoretically disrupt the flow of aqueous humor, and that can affect pressure within the eye, which could cause glaucoma. It could also rub against the iris, causing friction or pigments to dispense that could also contribute to elevated intraocular pressures. Uh, or it could just block the fluid flow entirely, at least theoretically. It also could rub against the lens, causing cataract development. Now, one of the major advantages of the new Evo ICL is that it has holes throughout the lens to allow the fluid to circulate around the lens more naturally. Whereas previous generations, in order to allow the fluid flow appropriately, sometimes laser holes would have to be made within the iris. But this lens doesn't require that. Fortunately, since the Evo was revamped from the previous generation, like the Vivian ICL, uh, the rates of these problems, which were low to begin with, are even lower now. In the 10 or so years of data, there really hasn't been any significant cataracts uh, that have been observed, and pressure problems have been a vast minority, less than 1% of patients overall. So the procedure is generally safe. And like with any procedure, it does require appropriate surgical technique. There is always a risk of infection or bleeding, so it's important to be aware of those risks as well. But in general, the procedure is really safe and does an amazing job for patients. Uh, now, what are the advantages of the ICL over other refractive procedures? Well, for one, it doesn't really change the shape of your eye, at least not fundamentally. We're not removing any tissue as we are with other lasers. So we're just basically choosing a lens to offset the refractive problems within the natural eye. So if it is taken out, you kind of go back to normal. That's not the case with other refractive options. Also, it is removable. So if your prescription does change, you could theoretically swap it out or replace it. Of course, there are risks involved. Or you could use a laser on top of this lens to make adjustments like regular LASIK down the road. And because you haven't done any prior refractive surgeries on the cornea, you have a little bit more room to work with, which is nice. It also has a little bit less risk of dry eye compared to other refractive procedures like LASIK, but it is more limited in its scope. So I think the ICL is a really great option. We've been doing it now for some time in this office uh, with really, really happy patients. If you wanna learn more about the ICL, you can visit our website. And for updated information, you can always check out STAR. Now, full disclosure, we do have a professional relationship with STAR because we're one of the few certified practices who are approved to do this particular procedure. But this content is really an unbiased overview of my thoughts on the lens so that you can learn more about it. Feel free to give us a call or check us out at CohenLaser.com and I will see you in the next one.